what I'll say about our approach is, you know, it's a black box. Like how the human immune system kills tuberculosis specifically is a huge black box. Nobody knows the answer. I don't know the answer. When I applied for the job, I said, here is a list of 25 different answers I think it could be. It could be actually choose A through Y. That, you know, Z is pick A through Y. Um, but I do, can't tell you which one it is, but I really want to um, exhaustively interrogate all of them. Because, you know, I think what a lot of people do is like we sometimes think about the most parsimonious, the simplest solution. Um, and so you say, we give X, we get Y outcome. But I think bacterial control has to be a little bit more complicated than that. Um, and so, but like, how do you study this, which is the real problem? So just to give you an example, um, you can imagine that if you remember like, you know, generic cell biology from like high school even, um, you could think about all of the different components of the cell. We got the nucleus, the mitochondria, et cetera, et cetera. But actually when a bacterium is engulfed by an immune cell, what you actually have is the formation of a brand new organelle. Because basically, you're basically forming a stomach on command. And this stomach is called the phagosome. And this organelle is actually really incredibly interesting, but it's really hard to study because it kind of, it's like, it's like molecular burning man. It kind of appears and then disappears. Um, and, but we don't actually understand really what is going on there in that organelle to really kill the bacterium. So um, my lab will tell you I'm obsessed with this organelle, which is probably true. Um, but how do you study something that only exists kind of temporarily? So to give you an example of why I think we're kind of approaching the question in a different way is like, you know, like some people will say like, we know this protein is there, we know this protein is there, we know this protein is there. But we said, let's blow that up because if we do one protein at a time, we're gonna be here until I'm 105 and I would like to retire at 75. Um, and so what we said is, okay, could we actually like engineer the bacterium directly as a platform to understand the composition of this organelle, the phagosome. So what we reasoned is that we could actually begin to use kind of synthetic biology approaches to actually engineer the bacterium directly. So we're gonna like engineer TB to tell you what's in its environment. And so what that allows us to do is now we get the whole, um, I also like to bake, um, so you get all of the ingredients that you have in your pantry and now you figure out and now that once we figure out the ingredient list now we can figure out like what are the different recipes that you can cook and if you think about we do have some ideas around what are the different recipes for bacterial control now if we can understand the pantry composition now we can actually go about um, baking so to speak you know history is really important um, and I tell people, especially even my graduate students, I was like, you know, um, a, when we think about how society or like how we deploy public health solutions, um, one of the reasons why I think we've done a really good job of managing tuberculosis in the United States is we have access. We have access to hospitals, we have access to clinics, we don't have to travel, you know, 40 miles to go to could to go pick up a prescription. And so TB, you know, the treatment is four drugs for six to nine months. Like, so you're taking four pills for like, you know, 180 days, so to speak. And, you know, if you only, if you're, if you're, if your pharmacy is only down the street, sure, you can maybe think about being, have, having access to, you know, the pharmacy and being able to go and get everything you need. But now if you think about the places where TB is most endemic, the access to antibiotics is a, is a, is a question. Um, the, um, the culture around medicine is very different in different places. And so I think all of these factors contribute. It's a multifactorial process. Um, but I think the reason that we have, we did a really good job of trying to minimize the TB burden here in the United States by getting people on drug regimens, you know, monitoring people, public health distribution, public health monitoring. Um, but it's not there everywhere else. And, you know, um, I oftentimes think, you know, personally, if we could solve poverty, we could do, a, we could make a huge impact in TB. Um, because, you know, a perfect example is, you know, a luxury that 
we have here in the United States are doors and windows. And, um, you know, if you look at places where TB is really endemic, um, a lot of those communities don't have the type of windows, the infrastructure that we just kind of almost take for granted here. And so I think there's a lot that's, there's a lot that goes into why um, TB is sometimes forgotten here, I think in the US, but I think, um, I think, you know, if we've learned anything in the last um, 18 months, uh, what I think we have learned is that infectious diseases are remain a huge problem, uh, that uh, we don't have a one-size-fits-all solution, and um, pathogens want to survive. And so uh, we have, we're fighting against the clock. Um, and I think in the, with the example of coronavirus, we jumped into the game really aggressively and quickly and swiftly. And we, and like every, every scientist and their cousin was like, I'm gonna cure coronavirus, right? Like every scientist was like, I've got a solution. Um, I'd like to see that energy maintained and I'd like to see that energy for tuberculosis. Um, and I, and it's interesting, it's interesting for me to speculate why we have not seen that energy for tuberculosis. Um, tuberculosis hasn't shut down the U.S. economy to the extent that, you know, coronavirus has. So that's one example, but who knows?